Welcome and thank you for attending our webinar on using RFM analysis to maximize average order value and frequency. So today we're going to explore RFM analysis and this is a really useful tool that helps you better understand and connect with your customers and also boost your sales. So whether this is your first time hearing about RFM or you're already familiar and want to learn more, uh, this session is going to have a lot of helpful information that you can use right away in your business. So just a quick introduction for those of you who haven't met me yet. Uh, my name is Daniela and I will be guiding you through today's session. I joined the prospect team about four months ago as a customer success manager. And uh, before coming here, I worked in sales and support where I really got into understanding what customers need and making sure they're happy with what they get. And that's something I'm super excited to continue doing here at Prospect. We also have uh, Alex and uh, Jess joining our call today. So um, let's uh, get started. So today's agenda is going to be structured to give you a comprehensive view of RFM analysis. Uh, we'll start by understanding what RFM is and how it works. Then we'll explore how to use the RFM analysis and dashboards within Prospect CRM to better understand your customer base. We'll discuss strategies for targeting missing orders and increasing average order value through effective upselling. And lastly, we'll cover how to leverage customer analysis to drive your business growth. So by the end of this webinar, you will understand more than just the basics of RFM analysis. And here are the top three ways it can really, really help your business, like customer segmentation, um, RFM analysis allows you to segment customer based on their transaction history, enabling personalized marketing strategies, optimization of sales opportunities, where RFM analysis highlights customers with a drop in order frequency, providing an opportunity to re-engage with targeted incentives and communications, and prevention of customer attrition. By targeting missing orders, RFM analysis helps identify customers who may be on the verge of churning. This allows businesses to intervene with timely actions to re-engage those customers. So, um, just a moment. Now let's get started and see how RFM works and how you can use it. But first, let me start by saying that RFM analysis is an industry standard segmentation technique that's invaluable for growing wholesale, distributor and manufacturing businesses. And in Prospect CRM, it is fully automated, calculated for you and updated daily based on each customer's ordering pattern. So your entire customer base is analyzed on the last two years of data. So what does RFM actually stands for? It stands for recency, frequency, and monetary value. Recency, this simply means how recently a customer made a purchase. A recent purchase is a good sign. It shows the customer is still engaged with us and more likely to respond positively to our next offer. Frequency tells us how often a customer buys from us. Frequent purchases are a strong indicator of customer loyalty. And these are the customers who regularly choose our products or services, showing their trust in what we offer. Then monetary value. This is about the total amount of a customer spends with us. It helps us identify our most valuable customers, those who either make large purchases or buy regularly, contributing significantly to our sales. Now, how does it work? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm now inside our test account on the account manager dashboard, 
where we can find the RFM analysis dashboard. So in our system, each customer gets scored on these three aspects. Think of it like a report card for customer behavior. Again, recency looks at when they last bought something, frequency checks how often they buy, and monetary value adds up how much they've spent. So Prospect CRN takes all this data and does the math for you. It gives each customer a score from one to five for each RFM component. A score of five means they're really engaged, like they've just bought something recently or they buy a lot or they spend big when they do. And then the, the system groups customers into different categories, like you can see here, based on their scores. You will see labels like champion for your best customers or loyal customer or needs attention for those who might be slipping away. And ultimately a customer that doesn't really engage fully or cannot be re-engaged then becomes a hibernating customer and eventually drops out of the diagram as lost or churned in the bottom left. So basically this, dash this dashboard helps you quickly see who needs more of your focus. And if I click here on see more, that will take you to a report with all of the customers uh, by RFM segment. If I click on the three dots over here, I can also sort it out the way I want. Um, and clicking on a customer, any customer, uh, will take us to the customer record where I will have a lot of the information about it. And also a tile called at a glance, as you can see here. If you click that tile or navigate to the sales analysis page on the left-hand side, you'll then see the customer RFM segment, as well as other key sales and RFM information. For example, on this, you can see, well, no data is available. I must have chosen the wrong customer. Let's choose another one, this one over here, loyal customer. So you can see which products they tend to buy more uh, and how frequently they buy them. And if a customer's last order would be the date here, it would be highlighted in red like it is now, that would be a signal because it's been too long since their last purchase. So here is when we become proactive. Using Prospect CRM's data, we can launch a win back campaign specifically tailored to re-engage those customers. And knowing this, how do we use the RFM analysis and dashboards to actually understand your customer base? Well, the beauty of it is that you can easily spot trends and patterns. And a key part of this is optimizing our sales opportunities. Maybe you'll notice a group of customers who used to buy frequently, but haven't made a recent purchase. That would be a golden opportunity for us. When we see a decrease in how often someone's buying, it's a signal for us to re-engage with them. And we can use targeted incentives and tailored communications to bring these outcomes, these customers back into the fold. And this could mean sending personalized emails with special offers or reaching out directly to understand if their needs have changed. And this proactive approach is what sets RFM analysis apart. It's not just about seeing the data, it's about acting on it. So by identifying these changes in customer behavior early on, we can address them right away, keeping our sales strong and our customers engaged. Let's take as an example, the alert style over here that shows us a list of missing orders. Here I have a list of people that, customers that should have placed an order by now, um, but they haven't. So I can go straight to those customers, um, and I can give them a call and see why they haven't placed an, an order with us. And uh, these customers, by the way, they can fall into any category, as you can see here. 
So by using these dashboards, you can tailor your marketing and sales efforts to match the specific needs of different customer groups. And it's like having a roadmap that tells you where to focus your attention for maximum effect. And this focused approach is key to building stronger relationships and driving more sales. So while we're focusing on targeting missing orders, like I was saying here, a crucial part of this strategy is also about preventing customer churn. Um, if we take a look at our hibernating customers, I mean, these are the customers who haven't bought from us in a while and they are at risk of moving away from our brand completely. So in this case, a customized approach can work wonders. For instance, like offering them a special incentive like 20% off on any order they make this month or for the next three months, however you want. So this kind of targeted re-engagement can spark their interest again and bring them back into active customer status. So it's key to remember that this strategy is carefully aimed because we are not offering this to just everyone. Our champions and loyal customers are already engaging with us regularly, so they don't need this extra push. By focusing on the hibernating segment, we specifically address those at risk of churning and do so in a way that's efficient and cost effective for our business. This is how we keep our customers base strong and healthy by rekindling relationships with those who've started to drift away. Now, let's move on to increasing the average order value through upsell links. So if I'm going to any customer, let's just take Mary Berry and um, When I go to sales analysis, this is a great tool for actually helping us in knowing when your customers buying habits really, really pay off. I mean, our CRM can suggest products, sorry. They can suggest products that the customer has already bought or higher value alternatives that they might be interested in. For example, for this customer, we can see that they've bought jam making kit. They are aware of the jam jars, multi-packs, but they are completely unaware and they haven't bought the fruit flavor jam. So this is a very good opportunity for us. I mean, we might go and say to the customer, hey, you bought this item last time, you might love this as well. And this approach is great because it's personalized and we're not just selling more we're offering something that adds value to their purchase. And when customers see the value, they're most likely to spend a bit more. So finally, leveraging customer analysis is about using all the insights we gain from RFM analysis in strategic ways. For example, our new customers, might have low frequency and monetary scores. And these are the ones that bought more, more recently, like, but they don't purchase often, so they need more nurturing. This group would be ideal for onboarding campaigns to introduce them to more of our products and services. And by leveraging this analysis, we can tailor our strategies to the specific needs of different customer segments, ensuring we're not just shooting in the dark, but are making informed, targeted efforts to enhance our customer relationship. So remember the three big benefits of RFM analysis in prospect CRM that we've just that we've discussed, like customer segmentation, optimization of sales opportunities, and prevention of customer attrition. Through today's session, we've seen how each of these benefits plays a crucial role in strengthening our customer relationship 
and driving business growth. When I think about RFM analysis, I think how it's all about making your job easier in targeting the right customers with the right approach at the right time. So, uh, yeah, I just want to mention that uh, I noticed that some of the questions you all submitted when registering, and I hope that during our session today, uh, I've been able to answer these questions through the insights. And if there are any more questions, please add them into the chat. Let me see. Uh, we have, have had question. one question coming, Daniela, um, about connecting this segmented data to MailChimp for email marketing purposes. That that's a very good question. How do we do that, Alex? Could you please help me on this one? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start off with saying just just thank you, Daniela. That's obviously your first webinar, uh, and really appreciate your efforts there. Um, Daniela mentioned at the beginning she's only been here four months, and for those in the in the audience today, doing a webinar is is always quite daunting. So really, sort of big thanks for for doing that so early on. Um, so yeah, uh, back to that question, sort of segmenting data. So you can build respect as most of you will be aware. And segmenting that data is actually something you can do within the report builder. You can find every company has an RFM segment uh, and you can go and find all of the companies with the champion RFM segment, for example. Once you've built that report, you can actually tag that list in MailChimp, assuming that report starts at a contact level, or you can actually add them to a CRM campaign instead, uh, just sort of whichever is um is, is more preference if you use the campaign module or just tag them straight into MailChimp. But but yeah, filtering on that segment on each company will allow you to do just that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, no problem at all. There, there, there was another question I see about upsell um, and how to configure upsell. So I'll, I'll sort of talk over that for a second as well. So Upsell is actually something you can configure at, at product level. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways of configuring that, a couple of different uses. So upsell is, is essentially a relationship between some products. And you saw some of those in our demo system are uh, largely around sort of jam making equipment and jams and such like that. Um, so you can, can sort of make a few different relationships, one of them being a recommended upsell. And what this does on a product, when you add a product to a quote, it will actually prompt other products to be recommended alongside so it prompts your sales guys as it were so if you were to add a in this case jar of bloopy jam or something it actually pops up and says little window saying would you like to recommend selling them a pack of three jar of blueberry jam or something like that so that's one way of upselling again just increasing that quote value um another way is an is a physical upsell where you actually increase the value through a better product. So again, if you have a blueberry jam, you might have a premium blueberry jam and it will just pop up and say, you're selling this, try and sell this. Um, so again, just increasing the order value through that. And then lastly is a, a must sell uh, sort of relationship where you've got to sell these two things or multiple items together, sort of as a pack if you like. Uh, so again, sticking with the jam data that we've got here, you might sell a pack of jam jars, but a window will pop up saying you have to also sell them lids. And that's not sort of something you can opt into. It, a must sell relationship will automatically add those to the quote. Um, so I thought I'd explain a little bit about that as well. And obviously if anyone would like more information, we've got some articles on that. I'm happy to run through setting that up as well. Uh, let's see what else have we got. Uh, so we got, uh, I won't mention you by name, but there is someone asking 
about how to set up the magic matrix um happy to come back with the article we've got for that we actually have another webinar on the magic matrix as well one we did i think i did it maybe last year novemberish time so we'll, we'll send across some links there i've just jotted your name down and if anyone else would like that just just give us a shout if you're interested in using the magic matrix uh, and then there was one other question here as well Uh, level of customization available in the dashboard. So this is something we get asked quite a bit, to be honest with you, and it's, it's not something we're able to do a lot of just yet. So there is some basic customization in regards to things like the need engagement tile, you can see there um, that can be configured. So I think by default, it's 30 days. So it will start saying or stop appearing in that tile if the customer has not got in touch or there's been no communication within 30 days. You can change that so it's 90 days or something. Um, but in terms of other sort of customization, it is fairly limited. You can configure this to be a financial year as well. You can sort of specify what month is your financial year. But other than that, in terms of dropping in and out tiles, it's limited at the moment. That is something we're probably going to look to change. It's not at the top of the priority list, but hopefully will be something um, that we can get done sort of as the product develops further. We have a lot of people who would like to be sent the link with the major matrix. Yes, we we'll had another that. sort of five questions coming through, and that's absolutely fine. We'll send everyone sort of links for the uh, configuration webinar we did and the usability as well. So that's absolutely fine. Um, other than that, I don't think there's any more questions we've had coming through. I'll give everyone a minute or two to make sure, there's, see if there's anything else. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. <laughs> Um, tell Daniela we did a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, much. And thank you, Barry. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and a few more people asking for the match. Oh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, how do you link the opportunity at the bottom of the analysis? That actually is something we also sort of answer through the magic matrix as well. So I'll send also the details across to that. But when you're building magic matrix sort of campaigns and, and awareness campaigns, you can add different people to those opportunities after you've done the initial mail out and such like that. Um, and then we sort of move people into an opportunity once they've got those logged. So um, yeah, we'll send over some art articles to explain that as well. I don't know if Alex, you want to just, um, or, or Daniela, maybe just head to the... A docs portal with all the help documentation is obviously as you guys have highlighted we'll, we'll send out those, those links that you've asked for specifically but it might just be worth heading to the docs portal so docs.prospect365.com um so if you want i don't know if you want to open that up daniela just on screen or you can go to the question mark in the top corner um to access that as well um yeah do, do within prospect then i'll be easy to find so if you go back to prospect daniela um just that prospect tab you've got. And then in the top right, you've got question mark. And then in there, you've got yeah. the, uh, yeah, exactly that. This is top sort right. of where we can yeah. help stuff. So top right, the documentation. Um, and then the academy as well for new users. If you're sort of brand new, learning prospect for the first time is really helpful. Um, so plenty of stuff <laughs> in here. Great. And we'll send over the webinar as well. Yes. I mean, we, we, we're, as, as most customers on this um, session will know, we've released every three weeks. So we're constantly updating this documentation to keep up to date as best we can. Um, so you, you'll pretty much find a document for everything in here. So any kind of help documentation you're looking for, definitely give it a search in here as well. Um, just if there's anything aside from the stuff we've mentioned today, um, we'd highlight that for you. Okay. okay um that's there. it for for questions I, i'll leave you to wrap up daniela thank you all for coming along yes thank you all for joining us today and for your patience and thank you alex thank you jess i hope you 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 liked it thanks daniela thanks everyone for coming in. all right thank you everyone take care